just hit the record button so we're in good shape we're going to go ahead and put this thing in the can i'm excited to have you all here i know this time of the year july the month of july is the busiest for estimate request of the entire year nationwide and we got a lot of folks that will watch this recording instead of tune in live but i want to get this for posterity because we're talking about something that is critically important and that is how to offer financing to boost sales and closing rates. Uh, I've had a lot of conversations with many of you about financing. Uh, we discussed it at the Painting Profit Summit. Um, wanted to cover this in detail. And I'm gonna walk you through some of the things I, I learned uh, along the way, trying to select a provider that I felt like would be a good fit for you, and then also how to implement it. So what you're gonna discover today is how financing moves the income needle. We're gonna talk about being honest regarding your sales process and the client's needs, how to implement financing into your PowerPaint presentation process, a partnership that I would like for you to explore, and then we're gonna take questions. And for those of you who haven't been here um, before, the thing that we do is I keep everybody's lines muted until the very end unless you're presenting simply because with go to webinars a platform and we may move to zoom it just creates a lot of feedback so we'll take questions at the end um, so if you have any of those just hang on to them and we'll come to you so <clears throat> the big thing about financing is is simple and that is it really helps move the needle with a certain percentage of your client base or potential client base and you don't really know what percent it is that will take financing and and use it and as we speak later with Alex and Noah maybe they can shed some light on this if you want to write down a note Alex about percentages of projects that are often financed and, and circle back to that when you present that'd be great but just as an example if you write 500 estimates, and let's say that there are people that are on the fence, they want to use you, but they can't quite afford you. Maybe you're more expensive than your competitors. Uh, maybe they just have a cash flow issue. Maybe they're in some of the categories of client type that we'll talk about in a moment. But you have to assume that a certain percentage of deals will close if you offer to break down the principal into smaller payments than if you didn't have an option at all. You know, options when it comes to paying for things, increased conversion. So let's say if you've got 12% more that you close and your average transaction size is 5750. Now you may say, well, why 5750, Brandon? Isn't the average painting transaction around $3,000 to $3,500? And for most of you across in the US that's about accurate for those of you in rural or rather urban areas it's going to be higher but most of your finance projects are likely to be larger projects right people you know the, the bigger the number gets the more likely people are to finance it again this is just a projection well if that's the case then that's three hundred and forty five thousand dollars in more sales right and if you're at that cash flow to to owner number that I like you to be at, which is around 30%, you're going to see $103,000 should be in personal income. And if you go all the way down to just seven and a half percent, which is just 37.5 more jobs, it's still $215,000 in sales and it should still be $64,000 in personal income. So, why do you want to look into financing? Well, just because of the income numbers. It's pretty simple income and growth. Now, who wants financing? So there are people that, that want financing, right? And there's some people that, that will not care for it, will not entertain the option, are only gonna look at the cash price. But the first group of people are those who are living the payment lifestyle. I mean, everything's on a payment, house on a payment, cars on a payment, furniture's on a payment, you know, tuition to their schools that they send their kids to is on a payment, vacation homes on a payment, everything's on a payment. And, you know, I'm a big, you know, advocate in your personal life of being debt free. But one thing I continually remind you of is that you are not your client. 
you are not your client and to project your feelings on your client is, is always a mistake in marketing and sales. So, and then there are those who want to preserve cash. Maybe some people feel comfortable having 60, 100,000, 10,000, $20,000 in the bank and they need to do the project, but they're not going to get into that emergency money. And this is something they want to do. And so they go, ah, why not? Or maybe those who want to go with you versus the cheap guy, but they need another month or two to make the budget comfortable. You're 20, 30% more expensive. They could go with the other guy and maybe they finance and with, with a uh, hearth to my knowledge, there's not a prepayment penalty. And so this means that now they can go with you because they got 60 days to pay for it instead of immediately due upon receipt. Okay. So there's some people that will take those options. So the first thing you have to do is be honest about your sales process and the client's needs. Um, I'm always going to be honest with you about anything that I recommend. I'm going to give you the good side, uh, the likely side, the bad side, everything in between. But your, your clients, just to be clear here, are still most concerned about how you hire and screen your painters for safety. They are still concerned about the processes you follow to ensure a quality project and experience. They are still worried about, have you done this type of work? Have you served this type of client? How many people are happy? Can you show me some proof, some evidence that backs up your claims of professionalism? Because I have been lied to so frequently by home service people and your industry has such a terrible reputation. Will you please show me a lot of proof so I can feel confident in making my decision? What type of warranties and guarantees do you offer? Can you talk about licensing insurance? These are things that we know based upon studies people really care about. And then you have to ask yourself, where are you regarding implementation of the PowerPaint presentation process? I was on the phone with a member the other day and I asked them, you know, well, how much of the PowerPaint presentation process have you implemented? Well, most of it. Most of it, really. And we start walking through pre-positioning. Just the email was being sent. We started walking through the estimate. It was still being emailed. We started walking through, um, you know, the company story, leave behind, but post-positioning packet. Well, the buyer's guide slash post-positioning packet was being used, but the other two presentation tools weren't being used at all. And so don't kid yourself into thinking that you're almost compliant or that you've almost implemented it if you really haven't. So the thing about financing, it goes into that similar category of upselling. If you haven't prepositioned well, and if you have not conducted the overview well, and the diagnostic survey well, and if you have not used the leave behind book and the company story and all that stuff, and you're just emailing in an estimate. You, you got to crawl, walk, and run, right? And you just can't, if you don't, if you don't satisfy all those primary nerds, uh, primary needs about safety and all those primary worries and fears about quality of work and reputation and a few other things, you'll never get to even grab their attention for financing or upselling. Why? Because you haven't cleared the hurdles, right? You got to clear all the hurdles. So make sure that, that you put this in perspective. This is, this is kind of like a, an advanced pitch to a degree. It you make sure your your sales process is strong. So offering financing will not make up for a weak, unpersuasive sales process that largely consists of impersonally delivering a scope of work and price. Okay, financing ain't going to make up for that. If you're losing a lot of jobs now and your close rate's really pretty low, you need to examine your sales process first. And you know, don't think that just offering finance is going to be a panacea for all that. So how and when do you work financing into your PowerPaint presentation process? We know that it's important. So there's a there's a time we're going to lean on it pretty heavy, and there's a time that we're going to mention it because as you interact with the clients, you can't say everything, right? You can't tell them everything. They don't have the bandwidth to listen to everything. So we're going to present it when it's appropriate. So I've taken existing sales tools, and I've added messaging about financing, and it's highlighted in blue. So whenever you see a template, when they get published uh, for the mastery calendar item, you'll notice that 
that the blue part is about financing and uh, I've created a few standalone tools to help you integrate financing into your sales process, okay? So a note about timing. While financing is something that we mention, it's not something we initially lead with as a primary differentiator. Why? Because we know, based on survey data, what they really care about first. We gotta address the big stuff first, right? Financing is most helpful when we discuss it in um, detail as price is presented. That's really where you lean on financing, okay? Not that we're not gonna mention it or talk about it or give them information in advance or during the rest of our part of our sales process, we are, but reducing the price pain and making the investment more manageable is the number one benefit of offering a financing option, okay? So during pre-position, when you're gonna talk about financing, and I've really got two things. Number one, we send a manual email, right? And it's a template. If you look at the bottom left hand of the screen, I've highlighted in blue an underlined additional section that we need to add about financing. I think it's the perfect place. I looked through other places and really couldn't see where it would fit in with our current sequence, but I think it fits in here. Additionally, I've created a generic template about financing that you can put in to your pre-positioning packet and the attachments that you put on the first manual email. Okay, and one thing about mail, I think for most of you, the, the four pieces of paper that you put in your pre-positioning mailer gets you to an ounce. So putting one more extra piece on there probably means you gotta add another stamp. And if that's the case, just go ahead and stuff the envelope up to that next ounce, meaning if you got just one sheet for testimonials, We'll print it front and back and maybe add a second sheet because the paper costs a penny, the postage is where the money is. So go ahead and you know stuff your envelopes. You can both use this as an attachment um, and you can and you can also include it in the email. So we'll be sending it by mail and email as an attachment plus the verbiage that's inside it. Now I included Hearth's um, flyer, which is better designed than mine, because I think most of you will end up selecting them as a vendor for the same reason that I think they're a good fit, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But, um, or and actually, Alex will talk about it in detail. But I put in something generic here just in case you, you, you end up doing something different. Okay. Pre positioning and presenting. Um, when you present, this is where I think that it needs to be added. Number one, on the residential interior and residential exterior survey, I added a final question, number 17. I think it's a, it's a different number on the other one it says we offer financing to help break your project down into small monthly payments would you like to learn more about this when the time is right yes or no so since our guys fill this out 50 percent of the time and since we collect the data ourselves 100 percent of the time then we should be able able to we should be able to to get an answer to this question and of course if when we send this out to them and then when they send, when they have it when we see them in in person then that means we can go ahead and talk about financing and know that it's important when we get to that stage of presenting we've got a heads up from the first seven to ten minutes that we're with them that they're going to be interested in financing okay some people say no not interested i don't think that still doesn't mean that you don't present it I think you present it every time without exception because people tell you things and then they decide something different later on. You, you see that happen constantly. Same thing with financing. So how did we alter the tools when it comes to presenting? Continued. Um, I had, I've developed a slide which is very almost identical to the uh, flyer and formatting for the sake of consistency and repetition. And you need to put that in your large leave behind book, that three ring binder with all the social proof, befores and afters, testimonials. I mean, the more the merrier. Probably put it toward the front of the book. And then I also added um, a, a, a line to the buyer's guide document checklist where you can insert that flyer that was previously mailed to them. You just put it in there a second time. And it's got that check mark there. And so where you want to add this slide is both in your company story. I think it's worth adding in the company story, even though we only have a handful of slides there and in your leave behind book. So add that financing uh, question to the check mark 
and then to your documentation list, insert that flyer. So it's essential to present payment options every time you present price. If you're going to offer it, offer it every time. And Alex uh, is going to kind of show you a tool that they have that gives a range. Now, these are estimates, okay? Uh, when they go to get financing uh, through the portal uh, with Hearth, depending on what comes back, their numbers are going to be different. They could have better than good credit. They could have worse than good credit. Um, and so we don't know what they're going to have. They, they have excellent, good, and a couple of other options. And when you present your proposal, I would say something like this, and I've developed, I put this script in there for you to make it simple. And you don't have to use it word for word, but I would. As you can see, you know, the cash price is eleven thousand seven sixty three fifty four. Now, Ms. Johnson, the, the price is so precise because we use specific production rates and we give firm firm quotes instead of loose estimates. So we're never going to come back to you and say, oh, it's going to cost more. And you also have the option of financing your project. As an example, you know, someone with good credit, I assume you've got excellent credit. Um, so your your prices would actually be lower and better than this. Um, you'd have an estimated monthly payment that looks something like this. Okay, at seven years, probably between 188 and 203. At five years, 298 and 310. At three years, 413 to 440. Okay, it's kind of a range. Now, don't hold me to this because when you, you get in there, I think you'll probably get a better deal. Uh, but these are just projections. So do you think you would be looking more toward financing or more toward the cash price? So when you ask that, people instinctively, it's easier for people to choose between two options and say yes than it is to choose yes between yes and no. Now you got them thinking about, well, which option would I choose, not am I going to do this? Okay, and of course you know how we close out estimates by asking their opinion uh, about what we've presented, you know, addressing objections, making sure we absolutely hear what they're telling us, repeating it back, solving that before we move on to something else, and then simply asking them, you know, given what I've discussed about our painters and how they're hired and screened, would you like to go ahead and be put on the production schedule? So we're always going to ask for the business, but giving them those options between financing and, and full pay it's going to make it easier for them to say yes later. So another good thing about financing and that you should really use this as a tool is the high price objection. Almost all of you are going to get that because as we know, if you can't be the cheapest, you might as well be the most expensive, right? And you can never be the cheapest. So most of you have pretty darn high charge rates compared to your competitors. And first you have to address you know, make sure you're addressing, again, what makes your painters, processes, and product knowledge better and superior, and you talk to them about why it's worth more money, because that's the fundamental underlying argument. It's not can you finance it, it's are you worth the extra money, and, and if you've done a good job in your sales process, if you've been persuasive, if their experience has been different, if you are gifting, if you are prepositioning, if you are walking them through all the presentation tools, their experience with you it's going to be night and day compared to the other painters. And the information that you give them is going to be night and day better. Now, if you half-ass your sales process, you're going to struggle to close on the spot, and you're really going to struggle when the price point gets high. Now, you got to make sure you've addressed the main things first, but once you know that you have and you feel that you have, then simply ask, you know, in addition to, to what I just shared with you, would you – Rather go with a professional company like ours if we could break your project into small monthly payments. Would that make it easier for you? Well, I don't know what that – well, it would not hurt to apply, would it? And you could just see what it would be. You want me to send you the link or however you do it. Exactly. And Alex walked me through it, but you're going to have to learn the technicalities on this. So to summarize, the desire for fin financing home improvement projects is on the rise. I don't see this going down. Okay, people are not going into less debt. They're going into more debt. Financing is more common, not less common. I believe it's going to be more common and more common, okay? Financing helps you close more painting projects for A, people who live a finance lifestyle where everything is a payment, and also those who need large projects broken down into smaller payments, okay? That, I mean, it's going to help you. 
And finally, you are at a serious disadvantage if you do not offer financing, yet your competitors do. And maybe the disadvantage is not severe right now, but it's going to grow more and more severe. I had one of our members, I think it was Kevin Eason, uh, or Kevin O'Brien, one, I'm pretty sure it's Eason. He asked me, he said, you know, who would you recommend for financing? And I sent him over to Alex because he said, you know, I just lost a job because I didn't offer financing. And it's going to happen. Um, and the, the thing about losing jobs because you don't offer financing is professional franchises like Serta Pro, Fresh Coat, Five Star, they're going to be presenting financing. You never know who you're up against. And you know as well as I do that often – your, your customers are not going to tell you anything about why they didn't choose you. They just won't tell you. You're not going to get much feedback from them. And if they do give you feedback, it will not be, in many cases, accurate feedback. And so if you occasionally hear about it, chances are you're, you know, it happens a lot more than you think. So every time we can have a tool in our belt that the average painter doesn't have and the average painter does not have financing in their tool belt, um, then we're really going to be ahead of the game. It's just something you need to do. So I want to talk to you now about a partnership with Hearth, um, and I'm going to have Alex and Noah come on here. And one of the questions you probably immediately ask is, well, why them? There's, there's other options. There's not a ton of options, mainstream options, but there are a lot. So the biggest thing that I like about them is they charge a one-time flat fee to access their mobile app, their tools, and their network of lenders. Other companies take like 7% and higher. And that's 23% of your 30% cash flow to owner goal. Like when you have to somehow work 7% into a project somehow, that's expensive for you. I mean, there's actually, I added to their presentation a slide that I thought it was important for y'all to see so that you could understand the long-term ramifications of missing percentages of your job. I mean, that, that should be between the client and the financier. That should not be on the shoulders of the contractor, in my opinion. And finally, they were responsive and easy to deal with. I talked to Noah, I talked to Alex. They were just easy to deal with. And Alex is the person you'll work with directly. Um, it was not easy to deal with other companies. And my thought was, Man, if, if if trying to deal with these companies is this painful when I'm trying to put them in front of, of members and painters, um, how painful would it be for our painters to interact with them? And so it, my experience has been good with Hearth, so that's another reason. It's a big reason. Customer service and communications is, is very important. So I'm now going to switch slide decks, and I'm going to introduce you to Noah and Alex here. They've made me their presenting diva because of technical issues. I'm going to be running the slideshow. So as you hear them say, next slide, I'll just be in the background here clicking my heart out. So with all that having been said, Alex, Noah, jump in here, buds. Hey, uh, hey everyone. I'm Alex. Uh, I'll be walking you through the bulk of the, the presentation here. And, and anybody who wants to you know, look at potentially coming on board with us, I'll guide you through everything. I also want to just quickly introduce Noah. He is a, a major part of our marketing department and uh, put together the bulk of the presentation. So I want to let him jump in and introduce himself as well. Yeah, uh, thanks Alex. Quick intro, Noah. Uh, Adelstein, I'm on the marketing team here at Hearth and we've been talking and working with Brandon for, I don't know, Brandon, I mean, it's been a couple months now in the works with everything. And, uh, you know, it really just would say excited to be presenting with you all right now uh, and and you know um, are a fan of Brandon's process and you know I think the presentation up until this point has been great and one of the things that you know Alex will kind of get into how our product works and and uh, you know the the value that it can add but you know a big part is actually adding the financing into your sales process and you know we've created a technology platform that we would say is is really revolutionizing the industry and Alex will get into it but a big part of that is actually adding it into your process and and being able to use that uh, to to see more success. And I think Brandon, you know, queued it up and 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 has a really solid approach for how to really be winning deals with financing and you know not just offering it. So yeah, excited to be here and, and appreciative of Brandon and 
uh, yeah, we'll let Alex kind of take it from here. That's some good butt kissing, Noah. Alex, you pick it up from here. All right. <laughs> Sounds good, my friends. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, quickly jumping in, um, Brandon, would you mind going to slide three real quick? Please? Just say next slide and I will click it. Next, please. There you go. Watch it off for finance. Three. Or, okay, hit, we hit, there we go. Okay. So, um, most Americans, you know, are not prepared for the next, you know, big spending purchase. And so it's really the bulk of how people are, you know, living the American existence. And that's why really financing is so relevant. So you want to be able to help these people out. Next slide, please. So once you've made the decision that, you know, financing is something that you want to provide to your customers, you really got to look at, okay, what are my options? So uh, traditionally, you would partner with some kind of lending partner, okay? There's some big names that everybody's heard of, right? Like Wells Fargo, you may have heard of like Synchrony, you know, there's a bunch of them out there, okay? These are, you know, banks. And with them, you're going to be able to do what's known as buy-down financing. So this effectively allows you to be a loan broker, okay? So basically, you can walk into someone's house, tell them exactly, you know, what rate, you know, they can expect to pay. Um, and you could maybe say this will be some kind of low interest loan, okay? But on the back end of that, you're gonna have to pay that lender a big chunk of your profit, typically like seven to 10% every time you offer a loan. So with us, we have a profit protection model. So you pay a flat fee for the year, it's a fixed cost, okay? It's gonna range from somewhere between 800 bucks to 1500 bucks for the year. And I'll get into the specifics and also everybody here has preferred pricing which is great, so thank Brandon for that. We'll get into those details. Um, but you really need to decide for yourself, okay? If you wanna put financing in front of everybody, do you wanna get hit with a fee every time? Or do you wanna know what that, you know, the fixed cost that you're paying to get this in front of everybody? Next slide, please, Brandon. Sorry, I was messing around looking at questions, go ahead. All right, no worries. Uh, so these are, you know, this is really simple math here, right? Okay, so, you know, if you're paying seven to 10%, right, on a, you know, $5,000 uh, job, you could be paying, you know, 500 bucks, $10,000 job, you could be paying, um, you know, a thousand, and it just keeps going up. And you also want to look at it, not just from, you know, one job, and I think on the, on the next slide here, uh, you can see that, you know, as you start doing multiple jobs, how this can really add up, right? So if you put this in front of everybody, you start closing a lot of deals, you could really start getting hit with a lot of fees and that can be painful. So I wanna help you protect that that bottom line. Next slide, please. And I'm just jumping in here. Guys, the, the main thing is this, and this is one of the big reasons that I locked hard. And I know we're kind of, if you don't read this, it's, if you finance 50 projects a year, which for a lot of you that write 500 to 1,000 estimates a year, you probably will. I mean, that's a small number. That's about 5% of all the estimates you see. It's probably for 50% close rate, that's only one out of 10. So, I mean, it's a very reasonable number. It, and let's say that the price of the job is $10,000 because it's a bigger job. And I just picked that as a price, okay? It could be smaller, it could be bigger, whatever. But even at 7%, that's 35 grand. That's a lot of money. If it's around 10%, it's 50 grand for financing. Um, you know, most of you don't lock the 3% credit card penalty and you add a, a, a payment thing to it. So you're really not gonna lock the finance, guys, if you do it the other way, I don't think. So this, uh, you know, next slide here, I think is pretty, you know, straightforward. Um, so, uh, looking here, uh, everybody can just see a side-by-side -side comparison of what buy-down financing looks like next to a profit protection model. And so really what you're seeing is that Hearth is changing the game here. We flipped the whole traditional model on its head. So with buy-down financing, you're going to pay a fee, okay, typically like 7% or higher. Also, you're going to find a lot of people aren't going to get approved, okay? If you have less than perfect credit, a lot of times just less, less than a 700 FICO, you're just going to get straight up denied, your customers, that is. Additionally, um, these banks won't be open to new businesses. So you're going to have to be in business uh, typically like two to three years, and it's pretty detailed. They're going to underwrite your business and make you do a ton of paperwork to get set up with them. And a lot of time, they actually require you to do your merchant services with them as well. And I think Brandon was just talking about getting hit with that fee. Um, we don't require any of that. 
Also, uh, you know, the, the, the jobs will typically cap out past 50K. That might not affect everyone here. Um, and also, they do a hard pull on your credit. So just as an example, if someone get, goes to their, uh, you know, local bank and they get denied uh, by their local bank and they try to, you know, get a, a loan with you guys, they have a less likelihood of getting approved the next time when they do a hard credit pull because it's hitting their FICO by like 20 points every time. So we don't do any of that. So as you look on the, the left side, the profit protection financing, there's no dealer fees or per loan fees. You're not going to pay a fee on every loan, none. We work with FICO scores as low as 500. So you're going to see many more people getting approved uh, because we actually partner up with about 15 lenders. It's not just one lender. We're open to all businesses. This could be literally your first day, like opening your business. We don't have to underwrite your business. And the reason is because the relationship is between your customer and the lender. It's not passing through your business in any way, shape or form. So there's no risk to you. Um, the loans go up to 100 grand. And also we're doing a soft credit pull. There's no risk to your customers uh, to see what options they get. As Brandon talked about, you know, being a good guy and uh, being honest, there's no harm in seeing what they can qualify for. Next slide, please, Brandon. So um, the way that people get approved, okay, so we're going to look at everything holistically, okay? It's based on the personal credit of your clients. So we're going to look at FICO. We're also going to look at income, um, debt to income ratio, uh, overall financial history, amount requested. We take a look at the whole picture. If they have excellent credit, which is going to be 700 to 850 FICO, they're going to pre-qualify 90% of the time, seeing rates from 4.99% going up to 16%. The loans go from 1,000 to 100,000. The terms of loans uh, go from one, they actually go out to 12 years, just to, like a little minor update, and uh, they'll get options from 13 of our lending partners. If they have good credit, which is going to be 640 to 700 FICO, they'll pre-qualify 70% of the time. They're going to see rates from 13 to 26%, loans from 1,000 to 100,000, terms from one to seven years, and they're going to get options from 11 of our lending partners. And if they're building credit, which is going to be below 640 FICO, going all the way down to 500 FICO, they're going to pre-qualify 39% of the time, seeing rates from 19 to 30%, loans from 1,000 to 50,000, terms from one to five years, and they're going to get options from five of our lending partners. Just really quick, just want to jump in here and just you know mention there's no penalty to pay off early, okay? So you're running into all kinds of situations. Someone just bought a home, right? And they're tapped out on, you know, all the money they spent to get into this place, but they want to do some fixes, okay? And they want to get something done. And maybe they have, you know, a, a good paying job, okay? You know, up and coming family. They can get this stuff done with you guys and pay it off in a couple of months and be free and clear of it. Also, people go through stuff, right? People go through bankruptcy and divorce. So, you know, if someone doesn't have perfect credit, we're still providing them with options, and you know it's a good way to help them get get projects done. Next slide, please. So to to jump okay. in here, just ask a question yeah. that they may have, and we're going to take questions at the end here. Um, the I haven't had a loan in like 12, 13 years, so I don't even know what a rate is anymore. The the APR range. I mean, what number one? I think that our clients people that want to have their house painted tend to be upper end clients because people will not roof their house. They will not plumb their house. They will not do electrical, but they will paint their own house. I mean, most people do paint their own house up to a certain age and a certain income. So my question to you would be, you know, if somebody's got good or decent credit, I mean, what kind of rates are you generally seeing? Because, you know, the spread from 4.99 to 16 is pretty big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so just as, you know, kind of a, general thing if you were to walk into your local bank and try to get a loan typically you're going to see like 12 13 percent is what they're going to offer you so for a personal loan remember there's no collateral here this is not a home equity line of credit for a personal loan to get a 4.99 percent rate is a great rate the reason there's a range on there is there's just all kind of things that you know affect uh, the rate someone might have excellent credit but like you said you work with well-to-do people they might have just bought you know three bmws you know in, in, the, in the driveway right so we got to look at you know what's going out have these people just applied for you know 10 different credit cards like this past month there's a lot of things that affect that rate but just generally speaking if they have all their stuff together and you know live you know a, let's say a, a humble you know lifestyle even though they're well to do i mean they're going to see a great rate and they can get a rate as low as uh five percent i hope that answers your question brandon very good bud next slide well and actually i alex we go back real quick i just want to jump in on one more thing uh, you know, and, and Brandon, you kind of asked this earlier and, and opened the question of how many people actually want 
financing and are asking for it. And an interesting thing, you know, that we see is a, a lot of people don't really realize that financing is something that they can get on a project like this. And so, you know, the, the answer of how much, you know, what percentage of people want financing on, you know, as many things as it depends on, you know, it depends on the type of people that you're serving, the, the project sizes, you know, the area and, and how wealthy they, they are. But, you know, if you think about it through the lens, especially now in this economic downturn where, you know, people are wanting to hold on to their cash, having that option for, for payment options when people don't realize, you know, that they even could do it in installments is, is really valuable. And so, you know, like there's no prepayment penalties and maybe I have the five grand, but I realized that, uh, you know, I, I want to hold on to it for, you know, one reason or another and I'll pay it off in a couple months or, you know, it goes into what Brandon was saying about the upselling and, you know, you're in the house and it's like, hey, you know, what, what do you think about doing the upstairs rooms as well? We can help you get those finance. And so, uh, yeah, I think just when, when looking at the rates and thinking about uh, when thinking about this, it's like, you know, a, a lot of people are, are probably more open to financing than they realize, especially when, you know, you make them realize there's no impact on their credit. It's not tied to anything. And, you know, it can't hurt for them to see what they what they pre-qualify for. Very good. And the other thing that's interesting is most painters, I mean, most painters are not going to present financing. They barely get a bid out the door that is legible and makes sense. And so I know that we're, our guys, our members are selling at a much higher level or a lot more sophisticated, but I can't remember the last time someone presented me with an estimate for a project that included financing. I did just, I've never had the pre, I've never had it presented to me as an option. So obviously if, if it's never presented, people can't pick it. But if it is presented, it's just a numbers game and a certain amount of people will select it. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm gonna move on to Juan Hurd and then to this one. Yeah, this let, let's stick here. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty cool moving graphic that we got there. Okay, so uh, before I jump into, you know, all about Hearth, a couple, you know, quick things that we went over, you know, how we're different from the competition. Um, I'm going to ask you guys a couple of rhetorical questions. Obviously, no one can answer me, so it's fine. You can just answer them on your on your own side. So some of you know over the last year, you know, how many deals you've missed out on, you know, because of financing, okay? Maybe some of you can say, you know what, there were four uh, deals where someone asked me for financing. I couldn't provide it, and I lost it, okay? And those jobs were 10 grand, so you know, that would have been 40 grand in revenue and I'm pulling a 20%, you know, margin on that. So, uh, you know, I could have been missing out on, you know, like eight grand or so in profit. And, and you might be asking yourself, well, what can I do to make sure that I grab that eight grand, uh, you know, moving forward for this year? And so that's why, you know, having financing as a tool is such a great tool. Another thing is that, look, when we go into these big box stores, I'm sure you and your customers, right, they're going in on the weekend, going into Lowe's and Home Depot, right? They pass by the kitchen department and stuff like that. You can get a lot of work done with those big box stores and they have financing available. You don't have to train the consumer on wanting to use financing. You just got to have the same tools that the big box guys do. So uh, working with Hearth, um, we're going to give you guys a branded loan request page for your specific business. Okay. So your company name, your company logo, it's going to be accessible to your team in a few different ways. You can download it from the Apple or Google store and have it on your you know, phone or maybe even a tablet, like a, an iPad when you present to the customer it looks very professional. You can also integrate this into a website, your website that is, and people could sign up for financing right through your website. And then finally, we'll actually build you a landing page that functions just like a website where you can send the customer a link and they can fill out for financing uh, that way. Okay, so next slide, please, uh, Brandon. On this next slide, uh, you can see that, you know, it, it's, pr it's a pretty simple process. Basically, they just answer 12 questions. They're the same questions that you're going to answer for any personal loan. Uh, loan amount, do you have a co-borrower, credit score, income, name, phone, address. Literally takes a minute or two when you're meeting with your client. Or you could even be over the phone with them while you're doing this. And they're going to get options from the lenders that we're partnered with literally immediately. And those options can actually be funded as soon as 24 hours. And they're going to see everything they need to make a decision. Our software puts the best three options at the top. You guys don't have to be crunching numbers in your head, you know, figuring out what rates and so forth. You're not closing the loan deal. The customer is picking the option for themselves. And they're going to see who the lender is, the monthly payment, the term of the loan, 
amount of loan, the interest rate, any fees associated. They choose the option they like, and then they go to the lender's page where they just have to submit proof of income, which is like a W-2 or pay stub. They can get approved fully in 15 minutes, get the money as fast as 24 hours. On average, it's like three to four days. So customer gets the money, they pay you, everybody's, uh, everybody's happy. Um, next slide, please, Brandon. So this is kind of just reiterating uh, some of those, you know, same things that uh, we went through is that, you know, look, this is profit protection, okay? It's a fixed cost, you know what you're spending and that's it. And you can put this in front of everybody. Um, the rates are great and uh, it's a really simple process to get options from a bunch of lenders quickly, close deals quickly, get the people funded, move forward. Everybody's happy, win-win. So let's, uh, next slide please, Brandon. And you can, uh, let's talk about actually tracking throughout the process here. Okay, so we're a software company. That's the biggest thing that I want everybody to take away from this, okay? We're not a bank, we're a tech company. So we give you great tools to give you guys control over the sales process. So we have customer tracking. As an example, someone could be on your website. Okay, you could be on the phone with them and they're on your website and they click a financing tab, which has your heart portal and they enter their info. You're going to get notified in real time via text or email, whichever's best for you. And you're going to see who's going on your portal, right? So you're going to know that these people are serious about getting set up for financing. And it's transparent. You're going to see exactly what they get approved for, exactly what they're seeing, you are going to see, okay? Someone might be thinking about doing a project where they're just, you know, repainting, uh, you know, the kids' room or something like that, okay? The kids' playroom. Maybe it's a, you know, simple project for a few grand. But they could enter, you know, ask what they could apply for for financing. Maybe they say, you know, let's see if we can get approved for 7,500 because they're thinking, you know, maybe doing a bigger project. They might get approved for 12 or 15K. You're going to see that. And then you can position your product around that, what you guys can deliver. And like Brandon was saying, you guys have a product that costs more and it's more valuable and there's a reason behind it. So you can position your product around that and you're going to know what people are working with. And then finally, you're going to see when the money hits the customer's bank account and then you know, you're just gonna collect the money just like you would from anybody who had the cash to begin with. Uh, Brandon, next slide, please. So this is just kind of giving you more insight into this. So we're gonna give you a dashboard. You can track everything. Uh, for some of you guys who have bigger teams, okay, maybe you're the owner and not the one doing actually uh, all the sales. Um, Brandon, if you can do the next slide, please you're gonna be able to see you know, what all your guys are doing. So you can track your own leads and then you can see what your sales guys are doing as well. So you're gonna see who's really out there, you know, kicking butt, you know, getting deals funded, closing deals, all the above. So really great way to just track everything across the board and know that you're winning uh, with Hearth. Next slide, please, Brandon. So uh, presenting financing, we wanna make this very simple. Again, this is not rocket science. Literally, uh, you know, like we were talking about, uh, Brandon, as well as I, you know, there are some people, you know, it, it's not necessarily the baby boomers, okay? If you're, you know, you've been saving your whole life, you know, you might not want to explore financing, right? If you're like 65 or 70, but, you know, people that are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, right? They sometimes live, you know, month to month, right? And they think in terms of monthly payments. So that's all we got to present to these people. With our loan calculator, you just punch in the cost of the job. In this example, we're looking at a $12,000 job and uh, these homeowners have uh, excellent credit in this example. And you're seeing that, you know, the average payment that Hearth has funded over three, five and seven years, right? Over seven years, it's 198 bucks a month. It's a much easier pill to swallow. So as you're presenting this to your clients, you just got to say, hey, look, this is what's going to cost to do, uh, you know, the interior paint of your, you know, kitchen and, you know, uh, bathroom. And uh, you can pay cash, check, credit. If you want to pay monthly, it'd be about 200 bucks a month. They're going to tell you when they're interested. All you got to do is present it. So it's getting them interested and bought in on uh, doing financing. Additionally, this can be integrated into your website too. And then people can, you know, use this tool and, and get kind of locked in on getting set up with financing themselves. Uh, next slide, please, Brandon. So as far as uh, the success tools for you guys, Brandon already showed you this, okay? So um, I think it's a great tool. I actually looked at some of the, the Painters Academy stuff about, you know, the way Brandon teaches you to sell, which is great, like doing stuff, you know, uh, proactively, right? So you guys are sending out a packet of what you guys can deliver, right? One of these things could be 
uh, financing as well, right? That you're partnered with Hearth. Hearth. Uh, this could be digital. We do these digital flyers for you. So it's going to have your branding. Like in, in this example, you're seeing that big, you know, N contractor biz name. That would be your branded uh, logo and business name. You can email these out to people. You can easily post this right to social media, right? Put it up on, you know, Facebook and, and all that stuff. Um, and it's digital. So the most important thing, it has your contact info, but the most important thing is it has a unique link to your specific hearth loan request page. So like if you were to run, let's say like an ad on Facebook or Instagram, it doesn't cost a ton of money to do it and you should, okay? I don't work for those guys, but the stuff works. When they go to your portal and start entering the info, we're doing the lead capture for you. So you're gonna have those people's name, phone, and address so you can follow up with them. So this is a way to generate leads as well. Uh, next slide, please, Brandon. Um, we got you covered with all the web and tech stuff. That's really the big take takeaway from that last, last slide uh, and this slide here. Uh, you're seeing here uh, that the website banners that we have available for you. This is exactly how it's going to look. I'm not gonna put it into your website for you, but I will give you the HTML code and you can have your web guys uh, put this into your website. And these are, you know, fillable fields, right? Like on the left-hand side, you know, fund your project, right? So they enter the info, hit get my rates, they're going right to your portal, you know, jumping right into it. You're seeing some other things about 0% financing, which is also something that we offer, which is a great tool for you guys, especially for people like you, you we're talking about who are well-to-do, right? So as we jump into the next slide, Brandon, I'd like to go over the 0% financing that we have available. So we have a 0% credit card, okay? So I don't know how about, about how uh, you guys feel about this statement personally, but I, I don't know if you like the term OPM, other people's money, okay? I'd much rather spend somebody else's money than my own. And this is how, you know, rich people think. And that's why 0% can be such a great tool. Um, for your customers who have great credit, 680 FICO or higher, we have the ability to offer them a marketplace of 0% credit cards. It's all automatic within the app. And they'll get cards from like Visa, MasterCard, Bank of America. These are cards that every consumer knows. They're gonna apply for it like any other card. They might get uh, approved immediately and, and you'll get notified. It's a physical card that they're gonna get in the mail and, and they'll pay you with it. They should be able to get a $10,000 credit limit and 15 months, 0% APR, okay? So it's gonna cover a lot of the projects that you guys do. It's not so much of just, you know, a tool to close the deal. It's an, an outstanding marketing tool when you can advertise that you have 0% financing for qualified buyers up to 15 months, okay? Like, do you think that I don't have the 0% credit card from Home Depot in my wallet, right? I do, okay? So people wanna have those same options. It's a great tool. Now it is a regular credit card, so when you process the card, there is going to be, you know, the merchant fee that you that you always pay, um, but a great uh, great tool to get people in the door. Um, moving forward here, next slide, please, Brandon. These are just kind of additional features as we kind of, you know, show you that we want to make sure that you guys are su successful. So our account managers are actively monitoring your progress to make sure that, you know, you're doing well with Hearth. And we're going to uh, continually give you personalized tips to make sure that you guys are successful as a part of our launch program. Um, next slide, uh, Brandon. Please. Uh, and with our dashboard, you're going to be able to track everything and really see that you see and know for a fact that you are getting a return on your investment uh, working with Hearth. So, um, you know, final thing is to get into, uh, again, to pricing. Uh, Brandon, if you want to jump into that, slide 25. So, um, we have um, three plans to choose from, okay? So, I'd like to just present the standard pricing uh, so you guys understand how great of a deal you're getting uh, as being a preferred partner um, with Painters Academy. So uh, normally all of our plans have a one-time onboarding and training fee of $99 and all the plans are the same with respect to, they're all paid in full to get started for the year. They're good for 12 months. You won't see another fee uh, for the next 12 months. So if you guys wanted to get started today, then you wouldn't see another fee till July 9th, 2021. Um, our first plan is the essentials plan. So typically that one is gonna be $7.99. That has a lot of what we covered. It's missing some key things, which are gonna be the ability to track your customer, right? So you won't have the functionality of that like lead capture. You won't know who's going on your portal or what people are getting approved for. It also does not have 
the loan calculator, which is a, really a tool that you need to have. Um, typically that one's $7.99, okay? But with you guys, you're actually not paying the setup fee of $99. That's why you're, you're not seeing it on the page uh, anywhere. And also we're discounting the annual plan by 100 bucks, $6.99 uh, for the year. Now, where I would typically like to see everybody is on the pro plan, which is our most popular plan. So 95% of the time, this is gonna be a great fit for everyone. This literally has everything that we covered today with the exception of that 0% credit card uh, add-on, which um, I'll, I'll go over in a second here. So it has everything, the essentials, it has all the customer tracking and notification, it has the loan calculator. Um, there's five sales rep accounts, that's for your team. So you, know, you guys are the owners and then you'll be able to view down on your reps as they're out in the field. It has same day support from us, uh, Monday to Friday, if you need any help. And that one is gonna be $8.99 for the year. It's not shown on this slide, but we do have the 0% credit card option add-on uh, for an additional $199 for the year. You can add that onto the pro. You can also add it on to the elite plan. Uh, the elite plan is, is for people, like it's a great tool if you guys don't feel that like you're super tech savvy, uh, for sure. Okay, so with this one, you get your own dedicated account manager. As an example, you know, you could be in front of your customer and they might have a question. You know, you're like right there about to close the deal and they have a question about the loan that you don't know how to answer. Okay. And then you could you could just hop on the on the horn real quick, you know, give us a call and we say, Hey, let, let me call my man uh, my rep Amanda down at Hearth uh, financing real quick. So you give a call and you know, we answer the question and take care of you. So you get your own dedicated account manager. So it's just an extra level of uh, of support also if you have like multiple businesses we kind of give you a package deal and can do a couple portals for you that one is going to be 13.99 for the year so that is that is everything um really now it's time to you know for the most part start wrapping things up and you know go through questions here i mean a couple more slides as you're looking at you know you really can just get a return uh by doing one job uh with heart this is the the average revenue closed from one uh, one deal uh, with Hearth, ten thousand dollars. Okay, um, you know two and so forth and so on. Okay, so if you if you can close three deals, you can really see a big impact uh, on your bottom line. Um, the next slide has you know some testimonials. I mean we got outstanding reviews online. You can you know recommended by like CNBC and Martha Stewart and up on the BBB we got like 70 reviews on there they're almost all five stars um, just a great up-and-coming company very proud to be a part of this team so um, that's uh, that's pretty much it I mean Brandon if you want to jump in on this this next slide here and tell everybody about how to get moving forward with the process here so guys it's it's simple if you want to start offering financing if you haven't or if you have been offering it and you're unhappy with uh, 7% or whatever percentage that you're paying uh, down, you can go to paintersacademy.com slash finance, paintersacademy.com slash finance. It will take you to this exact page and you can either schedule a demo or get more information. Either way, uh, Alex will get in touch with you there. And um, if for some reason you need this link emailed to you, if you'll just email me, I'll send it to you right away. If you don't want to have to copy this down, if you're riding around in your truck, um, et cetera, just, you know, email me and say, hey, send me that link, Brandon, and I'll do it. Now, we may run a little bit over. Um, we typically cut this thing right off the top of the hour, but I'm going to hang on to answer questions. Um, and I'm going to go to the questions uh, now. And so... If you have any of those, just click the old raise your hand button. And we've got one uh, from Christopher here. I don't know what it's about, but you have a little hand raise button uh, pressed down. So I'm going to come to you first, bud. Attendee is self-muted. Oh, there you are, bud. Good afternoon. Hey, man. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you as well. Um, just a quick question in regards to financing versus credit card payment. What would a homeowner see for cost savings if they were to finance versus use a credit card? I, I can take that one. Uh, thank you for the question. So a credit card. Okay, so there's, think about the kind of like buyers that we have in the world, right? We got the, the cash buyer, okay? They've been saving all their life. They pay cash. Then you got the, the credit card buyer where they know that within 30 days, 
they can pay something off. And then you got the monthly payment buyer. So with the credit card, if you know for a fact that you're that close to having what you need and you can pay it off in 30 days, then credit card is a good way to go. But if you're going to roll over the 30 days, well, you're going to get hit with a with a big fee from the credit card, right? Like those can be, you know, 20 plus percent uh, APR getting hit with fees. So the savings to the homeowner, if they know that they're not going to be able to pay it off in 30 days, maybe it takes them six months or a year or three, whatever the case may be, um, they can lock in a rate, you know, closer to like five, six, seven percent rather than, you know, paying 20 percent on that same amount of money. So it could be it could be a huge amount of savings depending on, you know, what the amount they're financing is. Does that answer your question? Yeah, definitely. What do you see for an average um, interest rate being approved at? So average uh, interest rate, I, I can't give you an answer on that because I just want you to understand that um, we deal with a, a, a garden variety of, uh, of homeowners, okay? We have everybody from someone, you know, a tree just crashed on someone's roof and they got to get fixed and they're in a low income, you know, area to, you know, someone wants to do a $100,000 kitchen remodel with, a, you know, 800 FICO and makes 300000 a year. So, you know, with that being said is that, if people have excellent credit above 700 FICO, they can get a great rate and they are seeing those rates very close to 5%. If someone has, you know, not good credit, um, I will say this, typically like below 700 FICO, most lenders are just denying these people. So these are going to be kind of like, you know, working class type of, you know, customers and they're going to see, you know, a higher rate um, than would be, you know, people who make a lot of money and been paying off their stuff for a long time. I know that didn't exactly answer your question, but I hope that did a kind of a, a better job of uh, getting to what the rates would be for your clients, which I'm thinking are going to be better because these are kind of more well-to-do people. Excellent. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. No problem. All right. Good question, bud. Um, let's see. Other people that have questions, I'm going to go to Tanya. Tanya, you're self-muted. All right. Try it again. Tanya, you're still self-muted. Maybe if you just type your question in, maybe you, let me see if I can get to the questions here. We did have some questions typed in. Um, let me look through here. All right, I'm going to go back to the attendee, see if I can get to you. All right, I'm, I'm going to come to Robert now. Robert, go ahead, buddy. Hi, guys. Um, basically, my question is regarding to once the, the, the customer gets approved for the loan and they get the money, what prevents them from going with uh, another painting company rather than going with us? All right, great question. I, I'm glad someone asked that because that's an important one and I usually get that on um, almost every single presentation. Okay, so a uh, couple things. First off, uh, regardless of you know who's doing the financing, every time you do a financing job, you want to get a cash deposit and that's going to be separate from the financing itself. That's going to secure the bid, okay? So you want to have your contract type, okay? Um, we are also going to have them sign a letter of intent that they're going to use 100% of the money with your business. They cannot pull the loan without doing that. You can even print it out and have it in your materials when you present the contract and have them sign off. Excuse me, I clicked the mute. Um, you're not going to sue someone you know, over that legal agreement, but it is really putting all the pieces of the puzzle together to make sure that you lock in the bid. So if you guys take whatever, 500, 1,000 bucks cash deposit, they're not going to walk away, right? So when you show up a week later to do the job, they're not going to say, you know, Joe Schmo did the job. No, um, because otherwise you just keep their thousand bucks and that would not be very intelligent of that customer. Also, we notify you when the money hits their account. So you know for a fact, 100%, they've got all 10 grand or 15 grand sitting there. It's actually, it's actually better than cash because in a cash situation, someone could say they have the money and not have the money. In this one, you know for a fact they have the money. So they sign the agreement that they're going to use the money with you. You get the cash deposit. That locks in the bid. 
you know they have the cash you do the work they pay you you're happy we're happy they're happy everybody's happy win 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 so it's it basically um it, it wouldn't help much to close the deal because we at that point um of offering the the job to or the the contract to them they're not ready to sign yet let much less give us a thousand dollars um when we're at you know the the selling point um the the attractive part of this is helping them helping us get their job because we offer financing but it seems like we'd have to already convince them first and then get a thousand dollars and then see how much they get if if they qualify and so yeah and, and just this is just my two cents who cares what they do with it <laughs> i mean we want them to to obviously use it but if somebody uh, gets financing for something and doesn't use it for that or whatever i mean that's the same person that could have just you have no guarantees that people won't back out of projects anyway and it's not like they didn't take the loan out through your business you're not responsible for it so i mean in the end i mean what they what they do is beside the point and i think to me, I think the percentage of people that end up not doing a project is probably super low. But in, I mean, in the end, what what's it matter? You get a contract signed, you put it on the schedule, and they say we're not going to do it. Well, great. You're six weeks, four weeks out. You just move on to the next project. You know. So I would say it's not even worth thinking about. I just I want to add in one other thing. And forgive me, I, I didn't hear your name when I was. Uh, um, Anyways, when you, when you ask a question, but it's still a really good question. I was reading between the lines of what you said, and what I what I heard actually was that it's not a reason to actually get the deal closed. And with that part, you're a hundred percent right. This is the fact that you have financing. It's not the reason for someone to work with you. Okay, it's like the last thing on the list. Okay, they want to work with you because they like you. They know you do amazing work. You stick by your word, and you're gonna do something outstanding for them. That's why they're gonna want to work with you. Okay, so they already, you got to have them convinced that they want to work with you. Yeah, like Brandon said. Yeah. It's just the extra little, extra nudge to get the deal closed. It's not the big, you know, lever. Does that make sense? Right, yeah. That's what Brandon said at the beginning of the presentation. Very good questions, bud. Other questions? See if we got anybody else on here. It's got some. I got Robert. I'm going to try to Tanya one more time. There you go, Tanya. Oh, hi. Okay. Um, how many? I, I missed it. How many lenders did you say you worked with again? That was not the only question I had. So we advertise so thirteen, but we're. But we're. I think we have total in our network. So repeat that one more time. We had a feedback loop. Okay. Uh, so we advertise thirteen. But we do have 15 lenders in our network, so we're always constantly like adding to our network of lenders. So we added a couple within like the last six months or so, a couple new ones. So that's and also just so you know, Tony, you don't have to like pick. Um, with the, the system picks all that. The customer picks what offers they want, and you know, once you get them in the and the system, the system and the client take care of all that so you don't have to turn into a loan broker. Um, and that's another thing I like is, you know, you make your, you give the customer the opportunity to make their decisions and then the, the system kind of takes care of the rest. Uh, I'm gonna unmute you again real quick here. You have anything, any follow up, Tanya? Oh, no, I was just saying that's great news because I, I worked in the mortgage industry 23 years. I didn't really want to go back to it, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Awesome. Well, thank you for the question. Um, anybody else have any other questions? I know, George, you're on here. You signed out and signed back in. You said you didn't have audio, but I assume you figured it out. Um, let's see. Any other questions before we wrap it up? Make sure there's none typed in here that I didn't get to. Uh, I don't know how to do this. Let's see. All right. I don't think so. I think I got them all. Um, let's see. Yep. That's all of them. As far as I can say. Last chance. If you've got a question to click the raise your hand button, I'll come to you. If not, I'll uh, let um, Alex and Noah kind of wrap us up here.
yeah i think uh if you guys want to book time with me i'd love to meet with you guys and we'll go over it you know tailored one-on-one -on -one specific to your painting business and we'll go through everything and we'll see you know the best way to make sure that this is the right fit and you know how to get a return on your investment uh, so just you know fill out the form as brandon had mentioned and well, I think I'm already going to be talking to two of you uh, shortly, so thank you for doing that already. Um, and uh, Noah, do you want to jump in with anything? No, I think uh, you guys covered it. Just appreciate the time and, and excited to to begin to work with you all. And you know, we're here as a resource. So, however we can be helpful in, in helping you be more successful, that's you know what matters to us. And uh, yeah, look, looking forward to kind of an ongoing relationship with you know with Brandon and you all. And and yeah, let us know what what we can do to help. Awesome, guys. Great work. Um, if if you're interested in this, just go to paintersacademy.com slash finance. Of course, you can email me. I'll send you the link directly if you prefer. Uh, finally, we're going to be posting uh, this in the members only portal. I'm going to be sending it out to all the members uh, a couple of different times because I think sometimes people, if I don't put an emphasis on it, they, you know, they may not go to it. So we'll try to, to get this out to the list. But uh, guys, I appreciate you very much. Um, hope everything's going great in your business. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, if you focus on the inputs, the outputs will follow. Love you, fellas. Take care. Talk to you soon.